How is it to work with your partner who's also the father of your kids? <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to the Unconventionalist Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Roos, and this is the show about what it's really like to turn your message into a movement. Now, before we dive into today's exciting and juicy, inspiring conversation, I want to invite you to come and check out my online podcast course on how to launch your very own podcast from scratch. Even if you have no idea about technology, and if you're not quite sure what your idea actually is. I've helped hundreds of people launch their shows and I want to help you. I realize that these are difficult times and that we are locked behind our doors, inside, and that we can go a little bit crazy. So I want to give you something that can give you a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, something to wake up to. And that is, of course, to launch your very own podcast. So go and check out www.thepodcastrevolution.com and put in podcast tribe, that's all in caps, podcast tribe to get 20% off the entire program. I don't want you to start 2021 wishing that you had started launching your podcast in 2020. So now's your chance, now's your opportunity, and I can't wait to hear about your show and the message and the movement and the impact that you're going to have on the world. Now, without further ado, I wanted you to introduce you today to today's guest, uh, and that is uh, Lucy Werner, who is, of course, the founder and co-founder of Wern. And uh, she's the author of Hype Yourself, a great book uh, if you're looking to understand how to get yourself out there, how to get some publicity about your business, about what you're up to in the world. Um, and she also is the creator of the 52 PR Tips cards, uh, which I highly recommend. I think she's got a bit of a Christmas bundle going on, so go and check that out. Um, but really what I'm excited to introduce you is that one of the things I hear a lot about is, uh, but I might not have the budget, I might not have the time, I might not have the resources to go and be featured in big media or, or be in the press and, and what have you. And, and how can I get people to talk about what I do? And how can I be people to pay attention to what I'm about? And uh, Lucy talks about this in the book, but we talked about this today in an interview. It's a powerful conversation. We talked about the challenges of what it's like to run a business when you're a parent, what it's like to actually run a business with your partner. Uh, we talked about the ups and downs, of course, of running a business. We talked about you know, how you can get your message out there, how you can start becoming more visible in your industry and use PR and publicity as a great tool to do just that. So... If you're new to the show, a warm welcome. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, by clicking the button somewhere here. And don't forget to put the little bell so that you get the reminder when new episodes come out. And if you're listening to this over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, thank you. And you can subscribe over on Apple Podcasts or, or, or Spotify. And of course, I'd be a fool if I didn't mention that every week I release a, a small email to my newsletter with inside tips and behind the scenes content of each episode. So if that sounds like something you want to join, then make sure you come to the unconventionalists.com forward slash newsletter. And I look forward to seeing you there. All right, without further ado, I give you the one and only Lucy Werner. Lucy Werner, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Loving the branding behind, I've got to say. Like, I've seen this now in your Instagram stories and really cool <laughs> shows. Like and I've really brought it in. You can't see the fifth shelf, so I brought that in in my jumper for you. So you've got the whole, the whole range. I just imagine you guys at home with, like, your toothbrushes and, like, your different pots that it's all just branded. <laughs> we haven't actually gone as far as in through the whole house, but perhaps... <laughs> We should consider it. Yeah, your poor kids, like lunchbox and like their clothes, <laughs> they're all going to be like matching colors. But like, I'm, re I'm really glad that we could, we could finally make it on 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 the show, and I'm really excited to have you. And um, you know, I want to pick your brains and talk about uh, first of all, like thank you know, thanks for the book. The book's awesome for anybody who's thinking about doing a bit of PR and understanding how to hype yourself. Um, there's so many directions we could take this. One of the first thing, you know, random question we'll start with is. How is it to work with your partner, who's also the father of your kids? <laughs> yeah, I described him the other day as the co-founder of my children, which everybody sort of found quite comedy. But I was like, well, he's not co-founder of the business, so he can't have, <laughs> can't have that title. Um, well, we met at work, so yeah. it's slightly different. We sat opposite each other. Um, so we had already seen, like, you know, there's that thing where people say you can see someone's true character by how they treat a waiter. Yes. I actually think you know someone's true character when you see them on a deadline with an IT issue. <laughs> 
that's very revealing. Um, and if somebody still likes you after yeah. witnessing that behavior, yeah. you, you know, it's pretty much a done deal. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like the side that only normally or sort of like family or siblings see. Um, so we, yeah, so we already had worked together and um, our brains work really differently. We don't, mm. um, his like specialist skills would be uh, Ikea flat packing. Like yeah. his brain is wired and he's full on creative. Um, he's dyslexic. Yeah. He's French, so he has his own cultural ways. I like him stuff. already. Yeah, but we literally, we all joke that like, if you give us like a plate of seafood, the way we will approach opening the seafood and eating it would be differently. Like yeah. we just, we're not the same at all. And yeah. so most of the time that is absolutely fine. The only time it's a problem is when we collaborate on stuff for ourselves. So yeah. writing a book together, yeah. doing a website, together for ourselves creating a product <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's um it's harder than, it's harder than making kids well you know we'll, we'll harder than making children and, and i also would say what saved us is we have a very good um virtual assistant mm. called claire she is not the cheapest out of the block but yeah. she literally is our right hand woman and i see her as an investment that I yeah. don't then need to spend. I mean, we're not married yet, but I don't need to say, save up for like divorce therapy or divorce yeah. lawyer because because Claire mediates in between us. And she basically micromanages him in the way that I would like to, yeah. but I don't get involved. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, there's a TV series called um, Ozark. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and he, yeah. uh, spoiler alert, anybody listening to this, you haven't finished Ozark seasons look away listen away and uh but there's a se there's a season where he pays off the therapists he bribes a little bit so that she navigates the conversations towards where he wants to go and i can just imagine you with your va just doing a little few extra bonuses to make sure that she <laughs> just do a few extra like checking calls this week yeah. um yeah so yeah it's pretty good and um i think my strengths are more on the kind of strategic and account yeah. management side and the numbers and the finances and he's like the kind of the creative output and so yeah. on that side of things it's it's fine i love it i mean i, I love the brand I, lo I went to check out your website before we jumped on the call you know how to look at that you know i just i just think it's really cool i really love it and um and you can tell like when you when you kind of go through the book and the way that you like the way that you speak when we talk to you the way that you are on instagram the way that you're in your book it kind of feels all just one which i think is <laughs> is uh is what a lot of people struggle with, right? This idea of how do I, how do I be myself? Yeah, um, you notice know, there's a real LinkedIn spiel that people have. Mm, mm -hmm. It's really like yes. <laughs> well, did you see? Did you see that meme? There used to be a meme of like your photo on LinkedIn, your photo on, <laughs> yeah. on Tinder. I've got the one of Mike Pence that um, uh, Trevor <laughs> Noah did, which is still engraved in my memory, which I can't get rid of. But uh, yeah. I just think, yeah, LinkedIn in particular, I find people really struggle with. Mm. And I'm like, you just, just imagine you're just talking to a friend. Like, mm. it doesn't have to be, I mean, obviously, let's, it doesn't need to be like a drunk friend in a bar or something. Yeah. Remember when we used to do that? I don't, anyway. No. Um, <laughs> but, um, I think I always play this like LinkedIn bingo with myself when yeah. I go on and you scroll through and you're like, excited, check, thrilled, check, delighted, check hashtag bliss check like it's this really <laughs> weird way that people like sort of announce um like announce things yeah. and it, they're always like excited and you're like are you Derek are you excited <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's fine though. it's fine if you are I just don't yeah. I don't think you don't look that excitable to me no I get that but I also find I don't know if you found this but I found that LinkedIn's changed over the last couple of years you know, it's it's a thing. It was trying to find itself, a voice, whatever it was, and then people started to use LinkedIn the same way that you use Facebook. And I'm just getting like lots of random updates of people's cats and their foods. But um, but so so how so what would you say like someone listening to this who's struggling with this idea of of being themselves or what does that mean to them online? On, on what kind of message would you tell them? Like anything you'd like to share with them? I mean, I think we've all heard the word authentic bandied around and it almost, you've, it's like we've heard it so much, like the word yeah. unprecedented, it suddenly doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, I think it's just, for me, it's really simply breaking down like what it is you do as a business mm. and 
just talking about it like there's a reason we all have our careers hopefully it's because you're passionate about what it is that you do or you have an interest in it or you're trying to change the world or you're doing something to empower others like sharing that enthusiasm there's Mm. real beauty in that and actually Mm. one of my favorite things about working directly with entrepreneurs is they are the best people to promote their own business because they all have this own like palpable like magnetic energy that it's just you can't it's contagious really, yeah you can't bottle yeah. that up and give that to a pr to sell for you easily yeah. um so for me like, if you can just take that that way that you pitch your business if you're pitching it to an investor or you'd want to tell a journalist if you're like this is the way i really want you to write about my business and just sort of drip that through all the time and the biggest mistake i think is people think they need to be selling Whereas actually, mm. I think you just need to be sharing, sharing. and giving mm. and showing a bit of your lifestyle. And, yeah. you know, it's not just, I, I quite often get people to talk about popular culture and relate it to their business. Because like you just talked about Ozark, right? So yeah. everybody who's watched Ozark. News or jacking. Had, yeah, it's like all of a sudden that you're going to have that connection with somebody now that's watched Ozark and be yes. like, oh, Mark talks about that. We'll probably be mates, you know? Yeah. It, it's just simple ways to be building bridges all the time. Mm, I like that. I like that metaphor of building bridges for sure. Because, because, but there's, you know, again, like, you know, anybody who's not following you yet on Instagram should go and check you out. I mean, that's where, <laughs> that's where we, I think we connected because we both, we both know Sam, right? I think that yeah, was like the yeah, original connection. Yeah, um, and, uh, and it's like, I'm loving all these, the photos you're putting up of like your face superimposed <laughs> on I'm like Harry on Christmas Carrie stuff. Or, yeah, on Christmas <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, now yeah. we started getting requests. So basically, I kind of wanted to do a bit of a tongue-in-cheek Christmas push to do this Christmas yeah. bundle. And I was like, yeah. I can't just keep putting an image of the book and cards up. That's so yeah. dry. Um, so we just started to mock up my face in different famous <laughs> Christmas yeah. films. And now we're getting requests. <laughs> so i'm like okay yeah yeah we'll do the grinch next yeah <laughs> sure so anybody listening to this can put in a few requests yeah. if you're listening by this but but you know in 2015 you decided to launch your own kind of pr agency or pr i don't know what, what you would call a pr nest i don't know what the, the word technical is <laughs> because you kind of you were tired of of seeing you know people getting overcharged for services that might not need and like entrepreneurs won't really get the fair end of the deal um, what was that like for you? Like, I know a lot of people listen to this kind of gone through that trot as well, but what was it like for you to kind of bet on yourself and, and go all in? You know, it's a really weird thing. Um, I've, I've definitely got like this dual personality. So when it comes to like Lucy Werner, I, I could be really self-critical and I can look in the mirror and I can pick out all the faults about myself, my personality and the way I'm physically. And then there's the Wern. And something in me is just like, I am really good at what I do. Mm. And I really love helping to promote wicked people. So for me, I, it was kind of a bit weird because it wasn't really, it was backing myself, but I had this sort of- Altered oh, ego almost. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, it's really weird inner confidence. It wasn't that I thought I was going to create a million pound agency and that I was going to sell it on and have a buy it or anything like that. I just thought- I think I'll be quite good at this. Um, I'll give it a go. And actually, I didn't necessarily intend to set up an agency. That was just sort of an accident. Like, Mm. I just thought I was going to freelance. And I gave myself three months. I had three months of savings. Okay. Um, And I was like, right. Um, And at that time, my mortgage was only £700 a month. Can you imagine? So, you know, my, um, my overheads are pretty low in comparison to, like, if I was doing it today. Um, so I just thought, right, yeah, um, I'm, I've got three months. And I, in the first month, I made five hundred pounds. That was fairly worrying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But by month three, I was doing ten grand, and was yeah. like, right, I need an assistant. Okay. Um, and it just spiraled from there. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 at one point, um, how did you come up with the idea of writing a book? Because I know it's not the most typical. No, but it's not the most typical kind of next step for someone who's kind of building up their agency or. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if, you know, the amount of tips that you give in this book around how people can do it themselves and like, you don't need to pay big bucks to kind of, you know, get, you know, things like newsjacking and writing for local papers and do all this kind of stuff that people could be doing. Like, how did the book idea come about? So when I started my own thing, 
um, I hadn't actually been doing PR for a while because this is a weird thing. Like if you've never worked in an agency, here's what happens. Like you go in as a junior, they train you up in what it is that you need to be learning how to do. So it could be design or marketing, mm -hmm. PR in this example. Um, then you get to like account manager and you sort of stop doing it. You sort of start to like oversee the team and you start not even being trained. You're basically in charge of a team. And then by the time you hit like account director level, you might have been in industry for anywhere between sort of like three to eight years. Um, but then all of a sudden you're doing new business strategy numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're not actually pitching to a journalist anymore. You're just coming up with a concept and then you hand it over to your team and they implement it. So I, all of a sudden I was sort of back to the shop floor. <laughs> and so I started buying PR books and, um, first of all there weren't any written by women and I was like this is ridiculous like yeah. PR is like 66 percent according to yes. the PRCA in the UK yeah I'm, I'm surprised it's not higher yeah honest, I, have, actually. I, I, I went with a bunch of PR agencies and I think it's always women it was yeah I think I had one guy once he was doing that he was in the social he was amazing um doing all the social media stuff and content but that was it otherwise they're all women yeah and 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 most of the books um were written by male journalists turned PR experts or there was two written by female journalists turned PR experts mm. and I was like there's literally not one here from someone in the trenches and for me yes definitely if you want to know how to pitch to a journalist a journalist is definitely going to be better than me to tell you how to do that because mm. they do it day in day out what I'm telling you is that I've been on the other side and I know what mm. it's like when the client's there going but I need to find a way to get the story out there um, and also, it's, for me, it's more than just getting press coverage. It's all the ways it's that you're... It's not about the press release. I remember you saying this. It's like, oh. if you think PR is just about getting a press release and then and then parachuting it to all your contacts, then you got it wrong. It's like, if we were on Tinder and your PR introductory line was like, who do you know? Who's in your black book? Uh, like, and um, who's in your contacts database? I'd literally like swipe right. Like, yeah. we are not yeah. going to work together because you don't understand. <laughs> you don't yeah. understand what it's like. Um so yeah, I think uh, there's this big agency background of like coming up with a strategy and aligning it, especially when you, I think that's what I've got from the big agency experience. You quite often partner with the ad agency team or the marketing agency or the mm -hmm. sales team, and you're all aligned on this one business goal. Um, and I was like, that's the bit that the kind of like pitching to media bit misses out on. It's like, mm -hmm. actually, there's no point doing any PR if you don't know what you're doing it for. And yeah. for a lot of small business owners, they kind of launch a business and then they're like, right, I need to get some PR. And I'm like, why? Yeah, why? What for? Do you, do you want to get sales? Do you want to get awareness? Are you trying to attract talent? Are yeah. you moving into a different market? Are you trying to get investors to look at you? Because all of that is going to shape what your publicity should be sure. looking like. Sure. And what I love about that is, is there's this thing, you know, I call it the impact formula, which is a three-step formula. You need to clarify, simplify, amplify. And most people focus on Amplify. So they'll say, I just need to have more people know about me, but, but why? Like, and, and a, a little anecdote, um, in 2009, I think it was 2010, my, my best mate and I tried to side hustle this startup of uh, making <laughs> online tailored suits for men. Um, <laughs> I wasn't where we were going to go from. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I get this LinkedIn request from this journalist saying, hey, I'd love to talk about your work. And I thought she wanted to talk about the business school I was working at the time. And I was like, yeah, fine. She's so like, yeah, so I saw that you're, you know, in the tailoring business. And lo and behold, she was basically a journalist for the Wall Street Journal. And she was interviewing me about um, Mr. Taylor, which was the company we'd started. And again, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this publicly, but we didn't have a website because we didn't have a website because we hadn't even started the company. We hadn't made any sales. We were still in concept mode. But, and she goes, oh, I, I was trying to look for your website, but I couldn't find it. And I said, oh, that's because we, we had too many sales. We had to shut it down. We had to like re <laughs> revamp the back end. Long story short, we were featured in the American, European, Asian, and world global edition of the Wall Street Journal in an article about Mr. Taylor. We didn't have a website. So that was the perfect example of how to, how to, not, <laughs> how to not do PR. <laughs> Dude, all those wrong. people who read about you then when so we try it we, we by the time i told my co-founder my best mate he's like my child um friend and uh you know i said you got, got to build a website for a landing page but anyway but all that's to say is if you're not clear on why you're doing it then it, you, you you're not going to do the right strategy it's going to be like yeah. a waste, waste and of also there's like kind of in a similar vein to that like there's stories of people actually like kind of in the u.s where there'd be like a food startup 
you know, like maybe the one that they like feature in House of Cards, you know, yeah. Yeah. and then all of a sudden Oprah features it and it goes out of business because yeah. it cannot handle the traffic load that happens yeah. when you get too much press attention on you. Like I was doing yeah. a PR for a fish and chip shop locally and they opened a vegan branch and it, I don't know what... I don't know if it was the slow news week or what happened. I'm not going to say it's because I'm brilliant, but like it went, it went insane. Like the, the girl who worked behind the counters from Lithuania, she was like, my parents keep phoning me because we were on national TV over there. It got picked <laughs> up by Reuters and the press association. So it was yeah. like syndicated out as video content globally, yeah. that like this East London had its first vegan fish and chip shop. Like, and it was, you know, yeah, it was a good story and there was good elements behind it. But we literally had like the chief food critic of Bloomberg coming in to like try <laughs> banana blossom. Yeah. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I've seen you on MasterChef and now I'm watching you <laughs> like fake, but that, fake but that, vegan prawns. <laughs> but that's what happens when you also got like, you, you know, you got a good story, good, good narrative, good angle. And, and I saw that you work with, you know, and he's also did the introduction, you know, Jimmy's Ice Coffee, who I met years and years ago when you were still dressing up as, as a as an iced coffee can and it's PR stunts <laughs> from like the rugby teams and stuff, um, but that 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 you know that I thought that was again you know, the kind of core brands you've been working with. So you got this book out, and so then do you do you then go pitch it around this idea to different publishers or? So well, so actually the 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 book idea was sort of twofold. So I'd had a child by that point, and I was like, I want to get away from running an agency. This is not mm. the life of me. This is not what I set out to do. I want to pivot and be an expert and I want to be able to change, have a bit more of an online offering, online products. So in my second pregnancy, nothing motivated me more than my second trimester. So just as I was coming out of the the wave of the first trimester into the second, my best friend who works in publishing was like, oh, you know, you've always been talking about writing that book. Um, There's this woman I know called Alison Jones. Mm -hmm. she has a podcast called the extraordinary business book club so she's always Mm -hmm. interviewing authors and she runs like a book proposal challenge and it was like a hundred quid for 10 days i was like yeah sign me up i have no idea what to write in a book proposal how to find a publisher like i know nothing i googled her she like seemed to be she's like a judge on the business book awards like sort of did my homework i was like she looks legit let's go um so i did this 10 day challenge and um halfway through it, I, it became quite apparent to me that somebody could win a publishing deal with her at the end of the challenge mm. and um I know that like manifesting and all of that like is a bit wooey but I was like mm, I'm gonna win this yeah. and I do these things where like Adrienne would be watching tv at home and I'd suddenly run into the living room and go I've won <laughs> she'd be like what what's wrong what have you won and I was like I've won the book deal and he'd be like oh my goodness have you and I was like no I'm just practicing <laughs> and then, and then um, on the day she announced it <laughs> And I sound like a nut. I was obviously, I had far too much energy or something. The day she announced it, I actually wrote an email to myself saying, and the winner is, and I typed my name in my desk. Like if I did it in my sent items, this is true. Um, (laughs) And I sent it to myself. And then there was a Facebook live to announce the winner. And and then I won it. And then I actually couldn't believe that I'd won. Oh my gosh. So I met up with her and she was like, you know, you don't have to stay with me. You can shop it around if you want. It's still good for me that I've produced someone if you get picked up by Penguin. Um, but I just thought, I know where I am with her. I'd really yeah. liked her. Um, and what I really liked about her is that she's all about making the book part of your business strategy rather yes. than the book being something that makes you money. Yes. Um, which, so, which, is, which, is, which is, I think, where most people go wrong, where they think I'm going to try and sell books as opposed to get the book to sell me. The, me, yeah. the book is the, the biggest lead magnet. And actually, there's little things that we did think about, but I didn't realize what the impact of that was going to be. So Adrienne and I knew from a design perspective that the thumbnail had to be super slick because yeah. most book covers as a thumbnail you can't see. Yes, on Amazon, especially like someone talked about this yesterday in one of the... Most, anyway, yeah, he said... When you when you see the small th- for people listening like what what's the thumbnail you mean like an Amazon if you're being recommended yeah. a book and there's like a small thumbnail it needs to be able to be visible and not yeah. all crunched up and loaded. So so there was that to think about. Um, my WAN logo, in fact, is actually not color bind friendly for a lot of people. Um, mm. They can't see white on green on a website, and also that green I have on the website, it's very um, to get that in Pantone you would have to like pay extra for print for it, and the green. Okay when we it came out in draft i was like that's not right if it's not going to match 
then I yeah. wanted it because it was too it was too dulled down. Yeah. So it was also like choosing the most impactful colours. Then it, we looked at our competitors and who else I would be sat against to make yeah. sure that I was the complete opposite of them. Yes. So it was really, really strategic. And then I tested them all out in the first instance on Instagram and LinkedIn. And I made everybody sort of rank them from one to nine. So everybody really came on and, that's, and, and it's such a brilliant way also to make people feel part of the journey of this they book. They loved it. They loved yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and actually there was a real, there was a real difference between Instagram and LinkedIn and there was a real gender difference as well, which I wasn't expecting. Mm. And people getting quite, um, like, is LinkedIn more masculine, Instagram more, more women? For, for my audience. Yes. But it was also, um, like the men were really into the red on yellow and the women weren't. Ah, so it was yeah, really yeah. funny like they were choosing different colorways and some women were really vocal that they didn't like the red they found it quite shouty yeah um she's saying starting like double red today <laughs> <laughs> can't please everyone um so yeah so it was definitely quite strategic and actually it was quite weird because two other books came out shortly after mine not related at all but had this like pink yellow and red mm. color palette and I was mm. like, mm, inadvertently, there's a bit of a trend there that I hadn't yeah. um, sort of anticipated. But the other thing is, is that two days after getting the book deal, Adrienne got made redundant. Mm. So that's when we were like, right, we're going to try and test out setting up a branding arm of the business. Yeah. And actually, people think that Adrienne did the book cover because we... Yeah, spent- was, that was my next question was like, did, did Adrienne do the book cover? Cause- no, but we briefed... So, Publishers control what the book cover looks like. You can guide them. So we created our own brand guidelines for the publishers. And we were literally like, these are our colors. These are our fonts. These are the book covers we like. Here's some mock-ups we've made for you. (laughs) You must have been the most organized author they ever had. I think they literally hated me. So they're like, oh, not only is she like on our case about PR and marketing, she's on our case (laughs) about the design of the cover as well. So I was probably horrific for them. Um, But yeah, so we were really like strong on what we wanted it to look like. And then even when it came back, Adriana would be doing stuff that you and I wouldn't even see where he'd be like, can you slightly tweak that? Can you slightly change that? Yeah. Bits bits of the angle. So no, he didn't design it, but he definitely had had an impact, like a creative director behind it almost. And then we had really weird things. So a, a French woman got in contact. And she was like, oh, your book was served to me as a sponsored um, book on Amazon. And um, I just looked at the front cover and I was like, yeah, I need to hype myself. Um, And she came through to me on like a new business inquiry. She was like, yeah, um, I need a new website and I need a new brand and I need a new, I was like, oh no, it's not me you need, it's Adrienne. And inadvertently without, because she was judging the book by its cover, she took hype yourself to mean like getting yourself out into the world visually. Um, so our book covers being quite a lucrative new business lead inadvertently yeah. for Adrienne. Yeah. So it's quite, I didn't expect a PR book to be the driver branding. I get that. Um, How do you come up with the title? Because the title is amazing. I love, I love the title, Hype Yourself. It's so good. The title is the last thing I did. So when I won the competition, I think it was something like, I think it was probably like the subtitle was the book title's name. And mm. she was like, it's dreadful. <laughs> she was like, you won't, it won't be that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it's another reason why I quite like her. I like to direct people. She was like, you, it absolutely can't be that. Yeah. And so I was kind of like, ah, PR yourself. Blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to come up with all of these words that were mm. like PR. And then actually I've got a friend called um, Reuben Christian who always mm-hmm. says I was like his, his hype woman. And I'd be like introducing him to people. And he was like, you're such a hype man, such a hype man. And um, and then I was like, yeah. And it was coming out in January. So I was like, oh, it's going to be so good. Like you don't need a self-help book for your business. You need a self-hype book. Mm. And, it, and it kind of came out. And it's weird because when I looked at Hype Yourself, there were no hashtags on Instagram or Twitter for it. And now it's like around, it's coming up to like 5,000. So it's yeah. definitely like, the word like hype yourself into to like hype your brand, hype your business. Yeah. It's definitely kind of me. It's like, I feel like Emma Gammon, Gammon, Gannon, of course, Emma Gannon. <laughs> when, when she has her book, like the multi-hyphenate, I wonder when she sees like multi-hyphenate out there in the wild, mm. is she like, oh, I made that phrase up. Mm. 
Yeah, I get that. No, it's it's good, and because because now, but now you're on a whole new adventure of writing a book. Um, you know, you're both going to be writing a book now. Like, how's that going? Are you, have you gone through the? Have you, are you going with the same publisher? Or are you doing? Yeah. So because it's, I think it's because it's a follow up in the series. It'll be the same sales team that that launch it, and I get a really good um, royalty fee for mine. It's much <laughs> because she's a smaller publisher. There are <laughs> there are certain things you don't get. So you don't necessarily get as big as an international sales team or as yeah. much opportunities to get into retailers. But again, we're not doing it for the sales. We're doing sure. it more for like awareness. So yeah. that's fine. Um, and whoever buys um, my books, like it means, but yeah, basically means I earn a little bit more. So I mm. feel like I get a bit of a bang for my buck. There's yeah. also another thing, which is when you um, self-publish, you, I mean, oh my goodness, we could talk about book rankings all day, right? Um, but so the the books, the books, sort of, I guess like top of the pops for books is called Nielsen, right? Nielsen. And yeah, um, yeah. If you are top of the Nielsen rankings, you can be either in the bookseller, which is the trade publication magazine, or it's how you get into the Sunday Times business bestseller list. And when I launched my book, anybody who bought copies of my book via my publisher, those did not count towards Nielsen. So there was probably like an extra... It's so archaic. It's so So archaic. I've talked to so many authors about, I've had some crazy thing like... If you did a batch order of a book, it didn't count as your sales towards your target number for your publish. Like, I've had some crazy things yeah, yeah. about the publishing so industry. They, so they now actually have, I think, because they've set up a retail arm, it now can count, but it didn't count with, like, my first book. So if to an industry, um, anybody within publishing can go onto Nielsen and see how many books I've sold, but it's not actually a real number. It's just the ones that are sold through retail outlets. Mm. Um, and the other thing is, and we can get into this a whole, this is like a whole other thing. <laughs> Me and Sam were chatting about this the other day, actually. Um, if you get an influencer, they can just get their audience to buy the book in the week of launch. Mm. And then they can be like a Sunday Times business bestseller. Because you got to, is there a certain number that you have to hit in that week? It's just against the other nine people. So I think the week I did it, and these aren't, I don't consider these influences. I actually consider these badass people. My book came out the same day as Squiggly Careers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing it's a book that did well. So it's really well. They had, there's two of them behind it. Um, and they literally, I think they had something like 4,000 copies go in mm. the first week. But there was pre-sales obviously like counted into that. There's two okay. of them. They're both from a marketing background. I mean, like they totally smashed it. Okay. Um, but, and there was me and I was like, oh, I kind of kept everybody back because I thought I wasn't going to like hit Amazon number one. And I think I yeah. did something like, uh, I think I did maybe a thousand in the first month. That's, that's still, I, I'm pretty sure that's more books than I ever sold on my first book I'd launched in 2013, 2014, not even joking. So, so Yeah, it wasn't horrific. Um, but yeah, it just, um, it's just so, so weird. And if you don't, my publishers, because they were smaller, were like, we just want you to get Amazon number one. So don't worry about pre-sales. Let's just try and get everybody to go on that week. Yeah. And then I hit Amazon number one in like 30 minutes. And they were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because PR is not a massive category. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the person. The person you know, you know what happened, Lucy, is because you didn't practice running into the living room screaming i'm on the number one bestsellers list and you, didn't you know what i that. actually changed my goal because i originally just wanted to get amazon number one and when yeah. i did that i was like Damn, i should have gone for sunday times yeah. <laughs> but um but you know it was nice i basically me and seth got in hang out all the time between the one and two spot yeah. publicity yeah. but i'm the thumbnail on amazon so yeah you know, just there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's cool. And um, look, there's there's another thing I want to talk about. And I look, at, and I know that you're working on the second book. And and whenever you're ready to to promote that, let me know, and I'll be very happy to share that on my channels and and pimp you guys out. Um, but one thing that I you did in the month of October past the mic, um, which I loved actually, because for me it was you know so many conversation happened around the month of October, but. Not a lot was being done, a lot of things I was saw done. But your channel, I saw that there were a lot of businesses, small businesses that you were promoting, um, which I've never heard about, which I would have never known about if I had not, because I'm living in my bubble in social media and, and this kind of vacuum. What was that like for you to start that off? Like, was there at first, did you have any 
resistance to it? Do you ever feel like, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I, am I being, you know, insensitive? Am by I being like, a bit too of a woke white woman? <laughs> well, no, but I'm just, I'm just curious, right? What's yeah, giving the internal so, dialogue? So one of our bigger business purposes for us is to focus on like promoting equality. And for me, um, it was really important that we worked on that as a business. So we actually have done quite um, a bit of our own stuff. Um, just in terms of like our own education, there's things that I do like behind the scenes, like turning down seats to speak at stuff. If it's an all white platform, yeah. stuff like that, little things that I just try and do tactically. But um, when the Black Lives Matter movement happened earlier on this year, I was like, no, enough's enough. I don't, I, I actually think as a business, because we're teaching people how to promote themselves and quite often they're not doing that in a very inclusive way. And I'm not just talking about black and white in this instance, I'm talking yeah. about all kinds of um, like marginalized groups. So we actually worked with a woman called Vanessa from High 15, who is amazing. She is French, so she's super direct, but she's super, super fun at the same time. She's very colorful, has loads of like art in the background. So we kind of, um, we get on really well. And we signed up to three one-to-one -one sessions with her. Originally, I was like, I think I just need one. And then she was like, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> after one, I was like, oh, like, I am not even scratching the surface of just even things like unconscious bias. I had no awareness of. Oh, so she was, so she was, she was kind of coaching you and mentoring you around unconscious bias. And yeah. And, and, okay. and, and, and so it was, you kind of do the first one where you sort of say where you're at. The second one, we picked at our unconscious bias and we looked at our privilege. And, we, and then we looked at like how we can unpick our privilege and what we could be could be doing. So mm. one of the things that she was talking to me about is I always do a weekly news roundup. And she was like, make yeah. sure you're not leaving out any stories of marginalized groups in your news roundup. In fact, make a concentrated effort to make sure that you're yeah, including some, yeah. other stories. So once I actually started to do that, I was like, oh, it's actually a lot. I hadn't even been consciously only writing about white businesses, but maybe mm. I, I had been doing that. Yeah. Um, so the share the mic campaign it was actually she was the one who told me about it and it was originally set up in the us and it was just for one day but some british owners in the uk were doing it for the whole month um so i just sort of put it out there to my audience and mm. just said if anybody would like the opportunity to use my and, I, and I love the way you say, phrased it because you said this is not about not getting paid for your work but this is about shouting like you know giving a platform yeah you know, giving you like, a platform i remember I've got like 10,000 followers now. I don't know how many of them are engaged, but it, and I don't really like to see myself as a, an influencer because I'm just like, no, I'm there to give like free advice rather yeah. than, it's like my, for me, Instagram's my billboard. Um, I'm not getting paid by brands. I don't promote stuff. Um, I mean, I promote stuff in the stuff, like if there's cool things that I like and see, yeah, yeah. I share that. But I don't really like, if somebody asks me to share something, I, I, I'm like, no, like that's not, I don't share people's kickstarts and stuff like mm. that. It's just literally that can help build your business. Um, so yeah, everybody took it in the spirit that it was meant in. Um, I nudge my followers a lot because the engagement isn't always as high when it's not my face on mm. things. Mm. Um, but a lot of those people, I could see who of my followers were following those people or just engaging with their content or making purchases. And I think, Every, a lot of people in my echo chamber were posting black squares mm. and um, and then subsequently I did a few posts where I would talk about doing more like I think we've seen it this week with the Sainsbury's advert everybody's talking about you know this backlash from the Sainsbury's advert for featuring a black family and there's a lot of people again talking about how outrageous it is but for me I was like I don't want to just be talking about Black Lives Matter when the Black Lives mm. Matter when there's a tragedy like it's actually supporting yeah. black British owners all the time um, and I kind of wanted to make my platform just a bit of a safe space for people to come and hang yeah. out for a month and share their their businesses I love I love no I loved it I thought it was really cool and that you know again a, a little bit like you, you when it all started getting a bit more awareness I started realizing oh my god like I so I thought like you know it's like the classic kind of <laughs> arrogance white arrogance around like I thought I knew and I thought I was pretty aware and all this stuff and and I started educating myself there's a book I don't know if you read um Robin D'Angelo called um White Fragility yeah 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 which I read that and that was like 
oh my god i'm totally racist like i have so like yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone yeah. and i think i think the worst bit is like when you start to scratch the surface of all of that we we feel really bad once we've read that book and then we go back to our kids and we mm. get on with our lives but mm. actually for other people it's not optional to like opt into no. that information yeah um so yeah i'm trying to be um i think be just a better um ally and a better advocate for equality but i am nowhere near an expert in that at all no. i worry all the time about tripping up and what i'm saying i'm always worried that i'm going to inadvertently say something. Or yeah, or, of, yeah. always um but i guess that's sort of like well that's part and parcel it's, and it's you know what it's also being part of being human yeah it's like it's like no but it's true and I, but you know what what i the reason why i was asking that question because i think the idea of shame and the idea of fear of not doing a good enough job gets too much in the way of doing anything about it right like that that's my experience my experience is that because if i fall too much into the am i am i am i, I want to i don't want to make sure that i don't say something i don't do anything so i withdraw mm -hmm. as opposed to like i'm doing my best i'm probably gonna mess this up but please you know this this i'm just trying to do a little bit that i can so and i and I, i'm conscious of the time and, and I, I want to be um mindful of of making sure that you know you've got kids and i've got kids and all this stuff and, and i know it's like but um what is something that you're excited about right now like what is something that you're working on or something that you're noticing or seeing that that you're excited about i think um i'm actually really enjoying the media's response to the pandemic in terms of small businesses like i've mm. seen a lot of call outs from journalists at the bbc like wall street journal new york times like big big media outlets who are like if you're a small business owner and you uh, want to talk about this or you're struggling with this like we want to hear from you mm. and i feel like when i started in publicity small business was seen as businesses that were turning over like 2.5 million there'd mm. be like a few kind of big boss big interview slots in the national news and that was it and now we've got publications like courier magazine mm. and we've got all these sort of modern business like space that just wasn't there before and i feel like we're just moving away from startups being like tech companies and startups actually being like a kind of broader broader sphere and i was reading the other day something like 881,000 small businesses were incorporated in July this year. Mm. So even though it is like, let's not sugarcoat it, it's difficult out there. We're probably about to, I don't want to give energy to like reset words around recession and stuff like that. You know, there's going to be some tough times ahead, but I think also what comes out of that is for some people, the ability to make more conscious choices and decisions mm. and hopefully you know the things that really resonated in lockdown were painting rainbows on a window like having mm. fun again being playful connecting with our neighbors supporting yeah. the nhs like yeah. these are really lovely things that hopefully will carry on beyond yeah. this like pandemic situation yeah 100 percent. and i think it's tough and I, I just want to you know a message of everyone listening and watching this it's yeah. hard like i yes. just I, you know, and i know that you you know, that's why I appreciate you. That's why, you know, we connected and, and why I like your, you know, what you're putting on Instagram. Like you, you also talk about that side. It's like, you know, yeah. it's easy to always want to be super happy and look at this amazing and look at the grip. But sometimes we, do, I mean, I, I'll speak for myself. I can't speak for you, but I don't want to show up. Like, I don't want to get, like, I, I want to go back to bed and I don't yeah. want to have to be this, this person, yeah, and I, yeah. I, you know, and, and, and people listening to this, I know that they'll be, they'll be going through this, especially now when it's hard, like we're locked in, we've got our kids, um when we were talking about my partner we haven't left this geographical location in i don't know how many months you know yeah so. yeah i think um actually your your own ted talk would be something that i would plug here <laughs> and just to watch if you can't even be bothered to watch all of mark's talk just watch the first five minutes and he'll just tickle that off quite nicely but um go and google it now uh, <laughs> but you know in all seriousness there is this weird glamorization of the entrepreneur lifestyle mm. and it's like actually especially when you are a parent owned mm. business i mean well that's obviously my name on the door adrian runs effectively the branding division yeah. when there's a problem with the company that affects both of us yeah. and then we are literally in a garden office 
probably approximately 17 steps away from our kitchen. Mm. So we go straight from our office to having dinner with our kids. Mm. So when it's a bad day, it's really hard to not to switch. Yeah. To not take that. How do you deal with that? Like how do, how do you, how do you deal with that? Because, you know, I, I, I that's something I struggle with on, on a daily basis, the guilt around when I'm working, I feel like I should be taking care of more of the kids. When I'm taking care of the kids, I'm thinking about all the emails or the clients or the stuff that I'm supposed to do. Like, have you found anything that's been helpful for you to deal with that kind of transition of that switch? So we've actually had quite a balanced relationship in terms of like childcare. So with our first yeah. child, when he was employed, we did shared parental leave, um, yeah. which in essence was him getting paid to not work for nine months from his mm. company, which was delightful. Love the mm. American owned company. <laughs> um, unfortunately their redundancy didn't work out for us um because <laughs> he wouldn't have qualified for pat leave elsewhere and yeah. um and our second child was born with quite a few health issues which actually if anything really um a gave us an idea of the type of people we wanted to work with because at that time mm. we had a bunch of clients that we had to say we need to walk away um, we can refund you or you can wait two months and every single person was like yeah god bless you here's here's a present here's some food here's this we'll see you in two months mm. and i was like gosh like that is the difference and we had like the small business community um mm. like one of my friends lara runs a um a freelance community called fan and flourish she set up a kofi fund all like my friends who are freelancers or small business owners were buying me a coffee the equivalent of a mm. coffee um and so we were really carried through some dark moments by the small business community like the equivalent yeah. of the office whip round i guess mm. um like fast forward to now, we we kind of like take it in turns, but we basically are we have a nanny three days a week. Mm. Um, we try and do like four days a week each. At the moment, it's more him doing five days and me doing three days. Mm -hmm. um, but the nanny leaves at four forty-five, so we stop work every day at four forty-five, and we sit and we have dinner together as a family, and we play together, we do bath time together, mm. and then if we need to do a bit of work in the evening, we'll do a bit of work in the evening. Yeah. Um, so, and then I sometimes get Saturdays, they have French school. So I get a few hours. He's like, it's your time. And I'm like, yeah, just logging on to zero, yeah. my time. Um, <laughs> but it's also, we try and, um, and that's why the feed is so colorful. That's why we joke around because fun is like our way to counter the stress. You will yeah. notice that the more stressed we are, probably the more colorful or the funnier <laughs> we are. It's like, it's like the yin to the yang. You have yeah. to do it like, I think one of the funniest photos I've got of Adrienne is him like posing and doing a stupid face on a, outside a rainbow print. Mm. It was actually taken like outside a great Ormond street hospital when our son was having like open heart surgery. Mm. But you're like, you've just got to take those moments where you mm. can to be like, we're still alive. We're still here. We're healthy. And actually that's the biggest like financial, like not financial, the biggest um, wealth gift mm. is like, we all get focused on money. But actually, yeah. if you don't have the health, there's there's no wealth to be had. Yeah, no, I get that. And I know you've talked about that experience as well. Like recently you talked about, I think it was, an, I don't know if it was the anniversary or there was something that happened that you were like, oh, this two years ago from, and you shared about it. And and um, and what I liked and what moves me about what you talked about is the community coming together and just supporting you and knowing, knowing who matters, who really is in your corner, who are the clients who matter. Like, Again, it's I find that in moments of struggle we find the the moments of hope and you know in in in, in business and in life. Um, so I, I appreciate that. So I've got a, a couple of last questions before we, before we wrap this up. Um, that's my daughter trying to get in uh, through the door. Who's <laughs> just come back? I can hear her coming in. <laughs> salut, Shelly. <Shelley! laughs> salut, salut. <laughs> <laughs> and um so so here's here's the thing you know i, I asked kind of all my guests around this and and they say yeah, this is just usual usual life and usually sometimes I'll, I'll be like in a client call or i'll be i'll be running a, like a workshop or a, giving a talk and like the door busts open and my daughter <laughs> runs through and i'm just like all right cool you know we'll kind of play with it um but yeah so, so that, the last kind of question i want to ask you is um what's something that you've learned that for you is kind of true than true about maybe business or life that you'd if you could pass this on and you could write this down and this would be something that you could pass on for everybody to read or everybody to listen what would be some things that you'd want to share i think um that's a really good question and i wish i'd had my answer closer to hand like a really well-trained media person before you <laughs> asked me that 
Um, there's so much stuff out there. Um, do you mean like specific people? Yeah, or? no, just for, so the way that I normally set this up is I'll say, you know, and I, and I took this from Lewis Howes on the School of Greatness. He's like, imagine if your yeah. book was erased, all your blog posts, your Instagram account, everything was closed. And, um, and you could write down, right? Like three truths about life that you've learned that you want to pass on. Um, what would those three truths be? The three truths about life that I'd like to pass on. Um, hold on, that's my mum failing me. I mean, we don't need that right now. Um, <laughs> By the way, this is the reality of life, right? Like my kids are screaming in the background. I'm trying to mute the microphone so it doesn't come through. Your mum's My calling. mother's failing me. This is the um, glamorous side of business, people. Anybody listening <laughs> still thinking about like, oh, is the business like really cool? <laughs> no. Um, I say like number one, always um, focus on the foundations. Like my dad's a builder and he'd always say like before like, you see a house being built you, it's the foundations first right and it's the really boring bit like if you think about painting and decorating a room anyone can pick up a paintbrush and slap the paint on um but actually mm -hmm. getting taking that time to work on your foundations is really what's going to help you have a better quality of life of product of service of purpose mm. um so that really can be like taking care of yourself like we talk about the foundation like taking care of yourself your yeah. knees like your health like yeah okay yeah so I'd say that's like number one. Um, number two, I'm, gosh, this is so, I'm literally going through every single person I know and every single piece of advice I had. And it's like, if you could watch my, like there'd be an animation here now and it'd be like flickering in the corner, like a bunch of neon. Um, number two, buy independent media. <laughs> Because people just consume stuff via their friends on social media now. We're in this echo chamber, like if you've watched The Social Dilemma, mm. um, we're in a real danger of you know, not actually supporting independent journalism anymore. Mm -hmm. um, originally, like when people set up businesses, they learned about business through print. So mm. buy independent media, support independent journalism. Mm -hmm. It's important. Um, and lastly, I'd say um, make time for fun. Like it took me to having like kids again to remember to have playtime, but actually <laughs> like we all need it. Like, don't forget whether you, if you, if you don't want to have a child, whatever, there's no judgment there, but like just remember to have fun and have playtime or whatever that is, whether that's you're reading a book or do you remember when like coloring clicks, those coloring books came out for adults yeah. years ago, there was this yeah. massive. Trend. Yeah. 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 Um, now it's like jigsaw puzzles. Um, yeah. but just try and find ways to inject fun into your life because you never know, like literally what's going to happen tomorrow. Wow. I love that. So before I ask you my final question, I just want to acknowledge you and say thank you. Thank you for sharing your words, but also just thank you for showing up even even, even when showing up doesn't look as cool as what people make up it should be, right? And and, and speaking your truth and trying your best. And, um, and I love the brand. Like I love uh, what you're about. I'm actually, uh, you know, putting this on record. I want to follow up a conversation with you guys and, maybe work with you and find some way to collaborate because I really love what you're about. And uh, anyone listening to this, do go and check out um, your Instagram, your website. We'll talk about where, where we can find you. And the last question I want to ask you is um, what does being unconventional mean to you? <laughs> it is like the school of greatness question, isn't it? <laughs> um, what does unconventional mean to me? <laughs> For me, it's about um, honoring all the different parts of your personality. Mm. Like we were talking about earlier, it's not very common for, I don't know that many people that can say like, I'm really good at what I do for a job, but actually I don't really like myself sometimes. Mm. And that's not very conventional. Like, mm. um, and talking about the different elements of your your personality. So I guess being unconventional to me is knowing that you have these different sides of you and your different characteristics and working, working with those strengths and with those weaknesses and looking after those different parts of you. Yeah. Love that. That's really cool. Ah, where, where do you hang out? Where can people uh, follow up with you if they want to find out more about what you do? So I'm basically work? in my garden office 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> oh, you met online. Um, so, uh, because I'm a chatty worm, um, I'm on Wern Chat on Instagram, on yeah. Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. I'm playing in the medium pool at the moment. Just yeah. giving yeah, it a go. Yeah. See yeah, yeah, yeah. Might, might hang out there in 2021. Um, 
and I have a monthly newsletter called Hype Yourself, which is literally just sort of PR, brand building, design tips, stuff we like. It's not salesy, so that you know it's quite easy. Cool. Um, and yeah, and that's Love it. it. All right. Lucy, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on the show and uh, looking forward to getting this out there and, and looking forward to hanging out. And look, when all this is said and done, hopefully we can meet up and, and uh, have a drink somewhere in London and all come together and we can What's all speak that? French. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember that day? But uh, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you very much. And, thank and I'll see you soon. That's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's powerful conversation as much as I did. I'm really grateful for Lucy and her time and her words and the wisdom that she shared with us. I think we can all do a little bit more uh, for diversity and inclusion in general. uh, And it really inspired me to try and look into what can I actually do from an action perspective, not just from a talking perspective. So if you'd like to get in touch with Lucy Worm, we're going to put all the details in the show notes below, whether you're watching this over on YouTube or listening to this over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, But make sure to give us a thumbs up and 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 a like or subscribe. And if you enjoyed anything about today, please let me know. Tag me over on social media at Mark LaRoost. And I always, always rejoice when I get tagged and read some of the conversations. And if you've got any questions, any follow-up questions you want to put in the comments, please put them in below in the video. And if you've got any topics you'd like me to talk about, I'm going to do a few solo rounds coming in the next few weeks. So if you've got a juicy topic, a juicy question you want me to tackle and cover for you, I'll do that. Just put it down in the comments below. Looking forward to it. Until then, remember your message matters and your story has value. And I can't wait to see the ripple effect that you have in the world with your message. I'll see you next time.